let's get you set up with cPanel based email. Now this will work for any cPanel based provider, but I'm doing this with InMotion hosting because we were able to work out a deal, benefits us, benefits InMotion. Take a look at it, there's a link in the description. We're gonna set up email, but we're gonna use cPanel. Well, what's cPanel? cPanel is sort of a, a web UI for managing a lot of stuff under the hood on your Linux system. It's really less about point and click GUI and more about standardization. It's standardization to the level that other people can support you if you, you know, sort of go off track or something goes wrong. There's a whole support infrastructure that will help you. If you're using cPanel and you're like recompiling Apache through cPanel and something goes wrong, you can get support for that. Um, so if you're running like small business or something that has the level of importance of small business and you're a little bit wary of a quote unquote DIY solution, this gives you a little bit of DIY while also giving you sort of some safety rails to protect you from going too far into the woods and from, from being eaten alive. So we want to set up a mail server, but we want a mail server that is forward thinking. Hey, you know, it's, it's like, oh, it's just an email server. The first time you set it up, it's fine. But um, any system that you have on the internet requires care and feeding and supervision. And if you just set up a Linux machine and you install the mail server and you do everything, it'll run great. It'll be fine. It's the ongoing maintenance that maybe gets a little problematic. And so with cPanel, because cPanel automates a lot of things like operating system update installation, your mail software installation, it gives you some feedback through the web GUI. It asks you questions sometimes like, hey, we added some more features. You want to turn these on? Um, it helps you manage those kinds of things even beyond what the distribution supports. So like if you're running CentOS or Red Hat or whatever, sure, there's a lot of stuff in the repositories. There's a lot of stuff in third-party repositories, and you can totally cobble all that together. And that's completely fine. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way. This is just another way to do it. And it's a little bit more point and click. And cPanel is hugely popular in web hosting because it is so easy and because it is the easy button solution. And it makes it easy for you to sort of compartmentalize users on the system and that kind of thing from, from a hosting business perspective. cPanel makes it easy for the people that own the infrastructure to sort of rent out the infrastructure. And it makes it easy for the people that are renting the infrastructure to actually make sure that it runs with as little headache as possible and there are responsible parties that will help you do it. It's actually a pretty good example of uh, a business model that works in the open source ecosystem and so I would be remiss not to point it out. That aside, we need to set up an email server and an email server is an assemblage of a whole bunch of different programs. You're going to have to set up DNS for the basics. You're going to have to set up DNS for the advanced stuff that's, that basically says, and it's a type of record that says, yes, I know what I'm doing and I can really honestly for real run a mail server and don't trust email from anybody other than my server because it's probably spam because we need to cut down on spam. There's also spam filtering options that you have that you can configure through cPanel, through the, through the interface. Uh, InMotion, in particular, has partnered with a really good anti-spam provider. Uh, they were using McAfee, but they're switching away from McAfee, which is good, uh, so that you'll be able to run your mail server uh, and have a sort of third-party spam list. But you control it. You can go in and you can say, no, I want, I want it to be super sensitive, or I don't want it to be sensitive at all. You control it because it's your virtual private server. So let's dive right in. The first thing that you want to do, well, if you haven't signed up for InMotion, uh, you probably should, but when you sign up for InMotion, in my case, for these demonstration videos, I'm using Wendell.tech. And if you want to get a .tech domain, there's a link for that in the description as well. But uh, I'm using Wendell.tech. So when I sign up for this, I don't want to sign up for my hosting as Wendell.tech. I want to sign up as vps.wendell.tech or in1.wendell.tech or something.wendell.tech. And that is the name of the server that's going to do a whole bunch of different things. If you watch the other video, if it if the other video came out before this one, I'm not 100% sure about that. We're doing a video on how to install NextCloud so that you can have your own sort of Dropbox-like service that's under your control that you can also stream media from in a very basic way and do file hosting and file sharing and sync with your mobile devices, sync with your desktop, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, if you if, if that video is not out yet, then that's coming. But if you didn't see that, hey, then you can go watch that. And so we're going to set that up under its own account. And we're also going to set up email under its own account. And so you would begin by creating a new account. And this is really nice because it makes it portable in case you're like, oh, I don't like InMotion, I want to switch providers. You totally can. It's totally not a problem because your account is linked to a sub-account there. And the InMotion thing can live on 
as you know, uh, you know, VPS dot Wendell dot tech or VPS dot your domain name dot tech. And so by not making the server the name of your VPS, you'll have an easier time moving DNS and moving records and changing which thing points where. So I'm going to go, I'm logged in. I'm, you can see that I'm sort of logged in here. I'm going to go to cPanel and I'm going to go to uh, create a new account. And for the domain, it's just going to be, I'm going to create an account for this. So you, so you see what's happening here. It's not the main account on the system. My VPS is not called Wendell.tech. My VPS is VPS.Wendell.tech. And now I'm creating an account on the VPS to service Wendell.tech because I want to have email serviced by this account. I may not even have the website serviced by this account. I think I may keep the website part of it serviced by Linode, but the email for Wendell.tech is going to be serviced by this account. So that's how I'm starting. Okay, now the first important thing that you need to make a note of is enable SPF on this account. This will be different for you, but you want to copy the stuff inside the parentheses. You don't get the parentheses. This is something that you're going to have to add in DNS that is the SPF sender policy framework record for your domain because this is totally going to service email. And I'm going to say local mail exchanger because I intend to service email through this domain. Okay, we get a checklist and you know finalization to say, hey, everything has been created. Everything is good here. The next step would be to log into the registrar or log into wherever DNS is and configure the DNS entries. There's two things we've got to do. Well, three things. We need to create an A record for mail.wendell.tech and then we need to uh, create an MX record that uh, points to mail.wendell.tech. Now, the temptation may be to put an IP address in your MX record. You cannot do that. That is not a uh, valid DNS entry by convention, at least historically. It's not been a valid uh, entry by convention to specify an IP address directly as an MX record. You must specify a domain name. And in this case, we're going to specify mail.wendell.tech. Now, TTL stands for time to live, and it literally means time to live in a cache. So what that means is when somebody looks up this at mail.wendell.tech, the server that looked it up is going to remember it and cache it for that number of seconds, theoretically. So this is pretty much it. Now for the zone, I'm not going to specify anything here. Sometimes you might have to specify at, like the at symbol, depending on what your registrar is and some quirks of the, the thing. At just means wendell.tech. Otherwise, in my email address, we could set up an email of like mail.wendell.tech. So you would email wendell at mail.wendell.tech, which is kind of silly, but some people do that. You know, you see that a lot of the time in uh, EDUs. And so, like, uh, you'll have, you know, something like CS for computer science dot Wendell dot edu. And that would be a perfectly legitimate email address. We can set that up if you're if you want to with your domain. I mean, that's totally a thing that you can do. But in this case, we're just not going to specify anything. We're going to add the record, see what happens. Okay. So this is, yeah, it automatically knew. So the name Wendell dot tech, priority zero, mail dot Wendell dot tech. You can specify multiple mail servers if you want to. If you were configuring like a Google Apps, if you've turned to the dark side and you're going to run Google Apps for your email and the other stuff, there's like five that Google says, hey, set your, your mail servers to this and set these priorities. And uh, this is sort of built into the mail protocol that it will automatically try different email services. It also used to be that a lot of spam bots didn't try any mail server other than the mail server with the lowest priority. So you could set a mail server that had the low, a very low priority, uh, but that was invalid or a loopback address, and then set something with like a priority of 50 that was your real mail server. And when spam would like try to send you an email, it would only just try the first server, and then it would never actually try any other servers. But every other legit mail server on the planet will go through the MX list and try other mail servers. That's not really the case anymore, sadly, because of the whole spam botnet thing. But if you want to, feel free to create an invalid A record that points to an IP address like 127.0.0.1. Add it as your primary MX, and then add a secondary MX that points to your real mail server. See how that goes for you. Let us know in the forums if that still works, but my experience was that, that didn't really work anymore, as of like five years ago. So it's probably fine. That's pretty much it for what we've got to do in DNS. Oh, SPF, that SPF thing that I told you to save. We're going to come over here to text records. Now, some registrars will actually have an SPF button, and you can just hit that and fill it out, and you're good to go. But it's technically a type of generic DNS record called a TXT record or a text record. Look at that. Okay, so this SPF record is basically saying uh, it's SPF version 1, and we will accept 
mail from the MX and from this IP address, that IP address being the IP address of the VPS. You may want to add other IP addresses if you know other IP addresses are going to be generating email on behalf of your domain. This squiggle all uh, it basically means maybe accept mail from all, and so it'll be up to the sending mail server to be like, mm, no, I'll reject that or, or I'll accept that. By and large, a lot of big mail servers like Google and, you know, I don't know, Microsoft and others uh, generally frown upon and or reject messages from your domain from anybody other than the MX and that IP address because of the squiggle all. There is a way to, to format this to say don't accept any messages from anybody other than these IP addresses, which is a sort of more secure configuration that explicitly tells mail servers do not accept mail except from these IP addresses because hey there's nothing really stopping you from sending email as Bill G at Microsoft.com you won't get the replies but when somebody checks their email and it's like oh this is from Bill G at Microsoft.com this is sort of meant to address that sort of uh, meant to help address the possibility of spoofing uh, on an email level and so you can change tilde all to I think minus all um, and, and then it will not accept messages. Other mail servers will do a lookup on your domain and your domain says don't accept mail from anybody other than this guy and that guy and this other guy. Then it won't accept mail when somebody tries to spoof your address. So SPF is a whole other topic that could be its, you know, could be its own video. So probably SPF and, and DKIM, which is a sort of uh, DNS authentication thing, those could maybe be its own video in the future. But for now, it doesn't matter. Just set it up this way and you're good to go. Be sure to use your actual real IP address you got from the server, though. Don't use mine. That would be bad. Okay, with your mail configured, you may have to give it some time for DNS to roll over. Uh, now would be a good time to wait until tomorrow or the next day or a few hours or whatever. Uh, but with your account set up, you can go to cPanel for the account that you just created and further configure some options. So cPanel, by default, it'll have this little wizard to help you do stuff. cPanel has some different options for web-based email. Okay, so on cPanel, we'll want to come here. And where it's got email accounts, we'll want to, you know, create an email account for ourselves. 250 megabyte email quota or whatever quota you think is appropriate. Okay, so it's going to create an account. You can do set up mail client and this will walk you through, you know, configuring some different options. So this is going to give you some hints about how you configure your various mail programs. And do note that this is running over you know, IMAP or POP3. I would strongly recommend that you use IMAP if you have the opportunity. Um, right now, as of this video, the current version of cPanel is version 60. Um, if you use, there's a webmail program called Horde. If you use Horde, uh, there is another protocol that will be available to you. The Microsoft Exchange ActiveSync is a very lightweight, very efficient protocol, and I think is a better protocol for mobile devices than IMAP in terms of, you know, lightweight, not killing your battery, that kind of thing the Exchange ActiveSync protocol will be available on cPanel uh, as of version 64, uh, at least with their current roadmap. So we're on version 60. 64 should be out sometime in quarter one of 2017, maybe toward the end of quarter one 2017. And so if you're using Horde, you will have uh, the option for the Exchange ActiveSync protocol that is provided uh, by an open source program called ZPush. Now I'm also going to do how to set up Collab, which is a suite of programs in a DIY fashion. This is for systems not running cPanel. This Collab in a Docker container would not really be 100% compatible with a cPanel type setup because it's basically a full machine, full stack. The setup on cPanel is very standardized and, and customizable through WHM. You can actually configure some stuff in WHM as far as the email services go and the default webmail program and that sort of thing. But this will get you in if you're using a third-party program. Uh, if you're going to use webmail, you can just go to your domain name slash webmail, whatever account you set up, whatever whatever you've got in DNS, and, and go to slash webmail and log in that way and you're going to get webmail. So we can do that real quick too. And so you see I just put in slash webmail and it's, it's redirected me. This is going to be Wendell. At, I see I'm, I'm logged into webmail. It's going to give me some options. I can pick whatever webmail program I want to use as a client. I'm going to pick Horde. I like Roundcube. I think Roundcube is actually my favorite, and Collab is based, the web part of it is based on Roundcube, but Horde is going to get support for um, the Exchange ActiveSync push uh, before anything else. So I'm going to specify Horde. And so this is going to take me to a web based email, web based whatever, and I've logged in, and you know, it's web based email. It's sort of my own personal Gmail running on my own server. 
And that's really it. There, there's not really a lot else you have to do here. Uh, the number one thing for security is making sure all of your stuff is up to date. And cPanel is going to do 99% of that for you. The only thing that it does not do is automatically restart your server when there is a kernel update. So periodically, you want to log in and you know just restart your server or make sure that it's that it's fully up to date. Because this VPS from InMotion, um, they, they don't give you root access by default. They will actually manage the kernel updates for you. And so InMotion actually sort of uh, smooths that over, uh, that, that sort of stopgap over as part of their hosting service. And so you'll want to uh, log into your VPS periodically and make sure that cPanel is up to date or that you answer its questions and that kind of thing. If there's anything going wrong, you'll see that it's going wrong through the web UI. If you configure the monitoring that we mentioned in the last video, it'll email you that it's like, hey, something weird is going on or hey, I'm out of disk space or, you know, hey, something is, is not right. You need to look at it and deal with the situation or contact support or whatever. Um, so you've got some options there. And now you can run your own email server under cPanel. Hopefully that gets you a little bit closer to getting off Google if you want to get off Google. So that's been two videos on how to set up Nextcloud. And hey, that Nextcloud tutorial would work just fine on Linode or something like that as well. You don't have to use cPanel for that. And also using cPanel for your email solution. Now, I personally think that, you know, if, if I were setting this up for somebody else that is not a sophisticated user, like somebody comes to me and they're like, oh, you know, I just want to set up a mail server and not really, and I don't want to take care of it from now until the end of time. This is a good solution because uh, there's only so many hours in the day. So, you know, unless they're paying me to take care of it, I don't really want to babysit them. And this is not a terrible option. So it's actually pretty good. It's pretty easy. And with the whole support angle, it's really not bad. So your mileage may vary. And do, you know, if you have a good experience or a bad experience, either one, let us know in the forum so that others can learn from what you've experienced. That's the whole point of this. It's going to be great. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out. And I'll see you later.